Welcome to the Intercut Podcast channel, the weekly place to hear the latest on movies, TV, and entertainment that people can't cut away from. I'm your co-host, Zachary Shevich, and joining me, he likes TV shows, it's Arturo Zurita. Uh, I like that line from the, the movie, I'm blinking it a little bit, but it's like, how can I have uh, a dream when I don't even have my license, or what is it, my yeah. dream when I don't even <laughs> have my license, my license. yet? Yeah. Uh, Destiny, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to talk about the one movie that I think that uh, we've all caught at various festivals, early screenings, mm -hmm. multiple yeah. times. And now that yeah. it's out, all the people that we follow, they're watching it multiple they're times a day. So yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, this is a movie that demands not just to be seen, but in a lot of situations to be re-seen. So we're bringing mm -hmm. on someone who skipped the Oscars to watch this one at South by Southwest. Yeah. Amanda, thanks for joining us for the I Saw the TV Low spoiler talk. Thank you so much for having me, because this really was that movie that none of us could stop thinking about after Sundance. After mm -hmm. Sundance. Like, it sticks with you. I've even seen people who don't like it who are still saying... I can't stop thinking about it. And I think mm -hmm. it Gotta will grow respect. on people like that. Like, it is good. It yeah. is a thing. It it's was our thing. most requested as well when we went. People mm. were asking, how's the sound? How's It's like the only time people mm. talk about how's the movie and how's the celebrity. People wanted to know the cinematography yeah. Yeah. about this movie. It's good. Yeah, yeah it, it certainly is one of the movies that's going to define 2024. Like when we look back on it, it is a, a monumental thing. I think regardless of whether or not you would like connect with it in a way that some people are, like some people are really, really being blown away by this film. Or if you just have like a, a more like at an arm's length experience with it where you appreciate some aspects of it, but, but don't fully embrace the movie. There still is so much to dig into, to talk about. We already have a spoiler free review back from our Sundance coverage living on the channel and in the... Mm -hmm. description of this episode so hit that link if you want to catch some more spoiler free thoughts we're going to dive more specifically into the plot into the themes into the discussion around this movie all the stuff that we've been feeling about I saw the TV glow which is filmmaker Jane Schoenbrunn's second feature film they've got a documentary out there as well uh, yeah. but narrative. in terms of narratives narrative, the second yeah. feature narrative distributed by A24 I Saw the TV Glow stars Justice Smith as Owen, a sad suburban teenager with a weak voice and slumped shoulders. One day after school, they talk to Maddie, played by Bridget Lundy Payne, who introduces Owen to a show called The Pink Opaque, airing Saturdays at 10.30 on the Young Adult Network. The show, a pink-hued, Buffy-inspired show about two girls connected on the psychic plane who fight monsters from across the county. Arturo, I Saw the TV Glow is a film that mines nostalgia to burrow beneath your skin and unsettle you. What did you think of how Schoenbrunn uses the past as well as our relationship to it as a gateway into this story of trans identity and regret? Uh, I thought it was beautifully done, not just uh, from an emotional level, but a technical level. The approach here of being able to switch between what would be the modern, obviously there's time jumping that happens in there, but the way the ratios are used. Like mm -hmm. they'll cut in for this show and it doesn't feel like it's trying to, it's able to mimic it really well. It feels like a show you saw like on early Disney channel on, on you know, back YTV in the day. YTV in it, Canada. Yeah, YTV. it's got the, it's got the, like the digitizing of it is done so well. The, mm -hmm. the way it's, those segments are directed feel like they're actually outside of the actual movie going on and it feels mm -hmm. like an actual show. Even just all of the design around it from the way that they have the VHS tapes to the way that it cuts between uh, the TV show to what's happening here. The mixing between both as well is phenomenal. That was one thing that really blew me away the first time that we saw it because we thought we were catching it at a rinky-dink theater. And it was probably the best mixed thing there. It's the reason yeah. why I caught it twice at Sundance to catch it at the Ray Theater, which is their best Dolby Theater there. And it stands out. Emotionally, it is the most haunting movie possible Ugh. and i think that's where i know people argue whether it's a horror or not horrors aren't it's, always jump scares it's, it's it, it can be a long <laughs> dreadful scare that you have to hold with for the rest of your life and yeah. uh, justice embodies that perfectly especially mm -hmm. towards the end yeah, yeah. Uh, amanda that relationship to the past how did it resonate with you yeah, it's uh, the whole thing resonated uh, a lot, but I, I think a lot of people can kind of relate to, you know, growing up and, and finding something that feels so 
precious to you that starts defining parts of your character that helps you kind of maybe realize things about yourself, whether because that's what the piece of media is actually doing, mm -hmm. or that just becomes the vessel for you to find things out about yourself in interesting ways, uh, and how that can affect you going forward and your relationship with that down the line when you try to look back at it and try to figure out why it does that. But yeah, it is uh, it is just kind of this like whole gut punch uh, of a movie on so many levels. And I think some people might be getting maybe a little bit too focused on the nostalgia aspect specifically. Mm -hmm. It is obviously such a, a large part of it, but it isn't supposed to be this like, oh, this is like what nostalgia is like and things just mm -hmm. aren't ever the same when you actually get back to them. <laughs> it's not <laughs> supposed to be that. Uh, it's a cool part it, of it. It is a cool part of it, but it's... It's how they're using it isn't just right, kind yeah. of like, yeah, I guess that wasn't as good as I thought it was. <laughs> totally. Maybe really, yeah. Is it meta? Is that what we're going to be doing with this movie? People already see it as being something they're going to revisit and maybe even holding that? Because it is your attachment to the media, mm -hmm. like Zach's saying. Yeah, it's not it just because yeah. it's right. current media will become past media as well. And what do we connect ourselves with? And yeah. that, that's what it's discussing in good and yeah. bad ways, I think, too. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I, I think it is, it's yeah. really interesting because it uses media and our love of it as well as our nostalgia for it as kind of this escape. And it, it both mm -hmm. shows how it can be this like savior, right? Like, like this, mm -hmm. um, this place of salvation, th yeah. this uh, respite from the rest of the world, right? But in a way, it's also what we can hide in and we, we hide from ourselves a lot of ways mm -hmm. when we, we focus too much on the past and we hide in our nostalgia. And I thought something that was really interesting when I got the chance to see the film uh, and Jane came out for a Q&A is they spoke about the concept of hauntology, um, which I'm probably going to misrepresent. That's but the, the idea of it is, is that as we have grown through, as, as Technology has moved forward and our inability as humans uh, to sort of like have a clear picture of what the future might look like becomes murkier. We increasingly sort of think backwards. We think to mm -hmm. the past and we, we sort of hide from what's ahead of us by, mm -hmm. by yeah. embracing the past in that way. And it, it's really interesting because as much as it is this kind of salve and this source of comfort, it can also be a thing that holds you back. And, and I think the way in which nostalgia is both this good thing and bad thing, this sword that cuts both ways, is, is one of the really powerful parts of I Saw the TV Glow. Definitely. Yeah. I think a big element of it is when you're using this media to be able to find yourself in a way, you create that attachment the same way when you watch something with a person that you love. That yeah. media now becomes reflective of that relationship that you had. Uh, with this specifically being a trans story, you have another movie that just came out, The People's Joker. Another mm -hmm. one that's using the entire relationship that they had with the, the Batman franchise and all the ins and outs of the, that. Specifically the Schumacher ones, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And then flipping that. It, it's, it's another way, you know, it's the copyright infringement way of doing this. Yeah. Jane created all of the, the this, this original series, whatever they based it on. And then, you know, yeah. <laughs> for people's joker, they're like, no, nah, I'm going to go all in. Yeah. And, and yeah. they're both fascinating ways to look back at, at what you grow up with and how it allows yeah. you to find yourself. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And um, I like hauntology. Yeah. So After Maddie invites Owen over to watch the Pinko Pick, and we should maybe mention here that at this point in the story, Owen is being played by uh, Ian Foreman, uh, another talented actor. Mm. Up in commerce. Yeah. <laughs> Owen lies to his parents about going over for a sleepover at a different friend's house. And mm -hmm. Maddie then begins recording VH VHS tapes of the show for them to watch since uh, the, their parents won't let him stay up that late on a Saturday. Did you ever record any shows to VHS while you guys Hell were growing yeah. up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. And then yeah. I was a big uh, and I was a man was Pokemon. I was gonna say a VHS person. Yeah, Pokemon for whatever reason always so, seemed to come on either like right when I was going to school or just like at weird times. So yeah, I think I always had like soccer games, like rec that soccer too. games. That too. That too. Just like Pokemon activities. Was on. Saturday afternoon activities. Yeah, I had some lost yeah. episodes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Mr. Bayman make, with the Lost. <laughs> you make me feel so old sometimes. Just those like couple years between us. I it's wild. <laughs> I just, just lost. I, I had older ones, but I remember Lost most recently. <laughs> it's the last VHS era. It's actually shocking that VHS recording was still a thing when 
lost hit the air. So we'll <laughs> no, no, just, no, it's we'll just because I had my VHS still that's ready. Fair, that's why. That's fair. <clears throat> when you really think about oh, you it, like, that's, the, yeah. that's, yeah. I never, I had a TiVo, never used it because it was way more confusing. You had space limits there where that's like, fair. you had this on, on a form of film. I, yeah. I think it's, cool. it's more than the nostalgia aspect that we have having used VHS tapes. I think it's a very interesting form of technology. It is. It's How like it an OG. Yeah. Just the idea of being able to to just record whatever the the broadcast is. Yeah. Obviously, now with the internet, you have a lot more things blocking that and, and the such. But I still got some VHS tapes for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's also something to like the tactile quality of it, even compared to like a disc that you mm-hmm. have to rewind mm-hmm. it at the end. That yeah. creates a really different relationship uh, to the piece of media. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the kind of interesting things that's going on in TV okay. Glow too. It is like the way your relationship, that's awesome, the way your relationship to these things changes it when they're like put on a streaming service, right? Like yeah. they, they don't, yeah. they, that, they don't have that precious quality to it. And mm-hmm. the way that um, they, that Owen talks about Maddie giving them the tapes, it's like the, this, you know, <laughs> this like really, um, um, like, what am I trying to say? Like a mixtape. Back yeah, it's like day. a mixtape. It's it was just a piece form of soul, honestly. Yeah, almost because it's like yeah. it means so much to Maddie, and then it me- ends up meaning so much to Owen. But it's literally just like this care of a gift that, like, I'm giving you this piece of myself that means so yep. much to you, and then like they then have to go home with it and watch it in the in the hidden. Hold it, take care of it. Yeah, take care of the it fact in that hidden hiding because. It. Hiding it because they're ashamed that they like it, that the dad thinks it's like a girl's show. Mm-hmm. I know with Jane, they said that it was, you know, not wanting anybody to know that they liked Buffy because mm-hmm. Buffy was a show for girls and mm. having to kind of reckon with that aspect of where that would take them further down down the line. Uh, so I always find that that kind of like really interesting that there are just things like yeah. for me, it's me remembering, you know, hiding my 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 L word DVDs and <laughs> and my copy of Debs in my closet, you know, right. like, you know, this is for me, not for anyone else to see, you know. Yeah, it is and, like and a, a text. It is and something email. we lost. Yeah. Yeah. It's different when you get a letter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When it's, it's like that. Yeah. yeah. Or like back in the day, mixtapes. Yeah, I used to make yeah. people like CDs, you know, and you don't you just I- don't do that anymore. <laughs> I told Lena date night. I got it on film, so you know. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. And and the way that media can also be this lifeline, like it feels yeah. in a lot of ways like Maddie is passing a rope down to Owen yeah. by by giving them the show. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you have the same relationship with media if you don't have that physical quality to it. I, I agree, it, and that it's is a different. thing. Go it through, shifts. yeah. Yeah, there's just pieces of things that you have in life that they mean so much to you. Like, uh, I remember seeing X-Men 2 in theaters and that Mm. being like this defining moment for me in a lot of ways. Uh, And that's like still a really important movie to me. It's just interesting how like things take hold. So, yeah, I I do really love that aspect and how it's used, not just like, oh, nostalgia fun for nostalgia's sake, but nostalgia and how it like forms you as a person. And like what happens yeah. down the line if you lose track of what right. that thing was trying to give you and what you were so close to taking and then didn't let yourself take that next step. Yeah. Zach's yeah. got a laser disc. Pull that bad boy out. He had brought it up earlier. Because it's crazy hey. to think that we're talking about VHS tapes and, and whatnot, right? I don't but have a player. I have a Jurassic Park one somewhere. The generation before, you know, nice. they looked at this stuff like that. So I'm. it's just insane to think what's going to be the new thing that the kids today are going to be like, well, back in my day, we at least still had 2D screens. We used to scream. <laughs> it wasn't all holographic. Like, it's always going to change, and it's just indicative of the time. That, yeah. yeah. Um, what's the, the saying about the, uh, the, the, the message, depending on the medium? The medium is the message, yeah. Marshall McLuhan. So uh, I think this plays, for it, plays with that really well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Later in the film, Maddie tells Owen about her plans to run away from home and invites them to come with her. Rather than go with her, though, they ask their friend's mom to help uh, help them get grounded. And this is the moment on my rewatch where I started to cry a little and would I just know. keep having little bursts of tears yeah. until the film ends. The way that Justice plays that moment, like, he, like he's on the verge of hyperventilating, so mm-hmm. scared of taking a chance. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. I do also want to clarify that other person isn't actually his friend. That was something that they were friends when they were younger. And then yeah, they haven't yes. hung out in ages because the mom was like, oh, you're going to hang out with, I think it was like Josh or something like that. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, we've been hanging yeah, out. Yeah, using I, it as a cover to go do the, cover, the thing that like, Owen really wants to do. Yeah, like they don't talk anymore. It He doesn't, like Owen doesn't have friends. Like it's other than Maddie and <laughs> Owen barely gets the chance to hang out with Maddie. Yeah, you Owen's know? friends, it's the tapes. Is it's the, the tapes. Those yeah, are, you know, and mm-hmm. the messages Maddie leaves on them and with them and what, you know, Maddie kind of brings him into, into that world. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Jane's love of Buffy, the role of the... Uh, Mom is played by Amber Benson Mm -hmm. from Buffy, which Mm -hmm. is something that I think Jane uh, was very adamant on including in the film. There are are several sort of icons of the 90s in smaller roles of this film. We mentioned uh, Owen's father. That character is played by Fred Durst. Unrecognizable. (laughs) In the best way. Yeah, because you mentioned that the father is upset that he's interested in watching a girl's show, and Fred Durst is this sort of like figure that in a lot of rep- ways represents the aggressive masculinity of the 90s. So it, it really does serve to kind of give a meta quality to that relationship as it well. Is good casting, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a couple neighbors who are played by Danny Tamborelli and I'm forgetting mm. the other actor's name who were Pete and Pete. And there's some clear Pete and Pete influence, particularly with the ice cream man stuff going mm. on in this movie. A lot of interesting meta elements in to, in terms of just the casting, but, but used going well. back to used really well. But going back just to just Justice Smith, I think he's giving a truly incredible performance here. Especially mm-hmm. the more the film progresses and the more you see him as kind of this like hollow shell of a person, mm-hmm. it, he he just does so much to communicate the damage, the the yeah. emotional toll that the character is going through. Yeah, just, just the, the wheezing. Mm. The wheezing, yeah. the barely being able yeah. to breathe, um, the cracked, dry lips, and just everything to try to be that the hunch. like, the to, hunch. yeah, as if you had actually been buried alive, and this is the weight of all of that sucking your life, your energy, everything from you. Mm-hmm. He really well, outdid himself from Detective Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw a couple of people saying that he wasn't the right choice for the role, but I'm like, That's I don't crazy. know what you're expecting from this character, but wait, like, wait, wait, he did so good. That says so much. The director chose him for a specific thing, so you're directing and looking for a different movie. That's what I mean. That's exactly what, it. And some people are, and some people are. <laughs> Not a lot, but just insane. some of the criticisms I've seen, or at least that have been conveyed to me that other people have seen, mm-hmm. is, is just wanting saying. a different movie. And that's cool. Then you go make that movie. Right? If that's How the movie you, you want... You know, then you watch People's Joker. It sounds like the movie a lot of these people want is People's Joker, which is sick. It's there. You can watch it. That's great. They're almost talking about it. Like, again, that it's already nostalgia. Like, this is an adaptation that got adapted wrong. It's not an adaptation. It's not. It's not an adaptation. Yeah. This is a a method of telling a story. How can you get the original wrong? Exactly. It's Yeah, it's interesting. And, you know, I've been there. Like, I think we all walked out of fingernails at TIFF being like, I kind of wish they had gone further in the direction it was setting up and then it veered here or something. Like, it didn't. You can say that for some things, but like with something like this, what they want, I'm like, okay, you actually just want a totally different movie. Like that's not even the the building blocks of what was being set up here isn't what you want from this character or this story. Mm-hmm. I um, bring that up with the music because we know that Jane was talking a lot about like, I got a budget. Yeah, I got a budget. Before had her back. I'm using getting it. A whole vinyl, everything. They used it and there's points where it just becomes a music video. You mm-hmm. know, for me, I was like, wow, we're going to stay here with this song. If it you is, like it. If you like it, that's that's all you right there because it is mixed beautifully. It is shot incredibly well. That's another aspect of it where it's like, yeah, those are parts of it where the director had a specific vision and I don't think it stopped in the casting of the lead. Yeah, Yeah, I totally agree. We got a, a sort of comment and question on our first review of I Saw the TV Glow because mm. we were a bit critical of some of those music sequences. And the commenter, Bender316, said, Aren't the musical features essential to the movie? Maddie mentions that every episode of The Pink Opaque includes two musical acts, and the movie is essentially in that way a giant episode of The Pink Opaque. Like, I think That's good there's. That's cool. Th- there, sure, sure, there is that meta quality to it. I don't think like a diegetic answer to the movie is like a satisfying answer. Like if, oh, well, if the pink opaque is bad, then the uh, I see 
the TV logo could be like that's sort of like a cop out answer to me. Like I think it that's has fair. to work it's, within. I like it though. That's within cool. the cool. context, but I it's agree a with cool you. idea, but, but like it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean yeah. it's yeah. good just because yeah. they say we that. All, yeah. yeah. Well, we Jane. Also know Jane, it, said. Jane. Yeah, exactly. Jane openly said, "I got the budget. These are my favorite I'm bands. Gonna I'm yeah. gonna use them." And I think so, that's like, cool. Fuck yeah. And like some of I like them. There's only one that maybe gets away but then just because of what it is i'm like no it works with the overall theme of the music and just screaming yeah. so it works yeah and um, i don't think any of us thought... can forget yeah that's what i mean you get that that is yeah. a standout one <laughs> I know. yeah I don't, I don't think any of us ru- thought it ruined the movie but there is a no. moment years later when maddie mysteriously returns and they go to a bar and get incredible seats to a phoebe bridgers concert yeah uh, so they talk yeah. about the pink opaque and yeah I, I think it just sort of slows down the movie a bit and I, I think there's another I like thing it. that I noticed in this scene in that, like, personally, I kind of wanted another shot of Owen. I think there is a reaction shot of Owen kind of missing in that moment. Okay. And part, and that's part of why, like, when we cut to the musical performances, it, it's cutting away from where I, as a person interested in these characters, want to be looking. That's fair. Owen asks Maddie where she's been, and she responds in these long monologues that she's been in the show. Not only that, but that the show's been real this whole time, and that Owen is actually Isabel from the show. And this is where the central metaphor for trans identity really comes to the forefront. Amanda, what did you think about how Jane chose to represent it? I thought that was really well handled with kind of these like little flashes. And that was kind of why when some people were walking out, uh, I'm not going to put any on bl- anybody on blast because they did end up liking it. But there were a couple people that we know uh, at Sundance kind of not being it's like <laughs> screening number one. They weren't being as oh, like they were just kind of saying like, yeah, it could kind of be this. And I'm like homie was wearing a dress like I don't know what you want, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, this is a whole thing. <laughs> I can, uh, I can't see not seeing the the trans identity yeah. aspect the, of it. the parachute thing. The parachute. The beginning. That's, I'll even the trans that colors one, in the beginning. Yeah, that one I give if you don't. Ca- well, yeah, and then knowing that like the song playing behind that is a cover of anthems for a seventeen year old girl. Right. Like the it, oh. the the works there. I could see not catching that being early and be like, oh, that's an interesting color version of that. I know some people <laughs> saw it and were like, oh, that's the bisexual flag colors, <laughs> and it's like. They did the best. They, they found the one flag yeah. that matched the trans flag yeah. color. The they time, did what they could. But by yeah. the time but it by gets the time to Justin that, Smith is walking around in a dress. A dress. And when you're literally saying, you're Isabel. Yeah. And then yeah. especially later when the movie actually goes back to kind of, not to spoil, but just to show that the Pinko Pig oh, might spoilers. not be exactly, but he's going in order. But I suppose when it goes back to show that the Pink Pig is a little bit more goofy goosebumps than right. the Buffy Owen was kind of remembering it as, or not even the Buffy, but like the... In between, there's a one that I can't think of right now, but you know something like that. Yeah, um, I said so weird. That's yeah, so weird. Thank you. That's the one. That um, was one that came to mind with me. That's yeah, my so weird. show, bro. Yeah, that one. Um, that you should be like, oh, he's literally has created, or they've created this world where they become these characters, and this is how they see themselves. This is like the imaginary yeah. world where you can be whoever you want in like your favorite piece of media, and Owen's Isabel. Right, like it's pretty clear what they're See, yeah, going there's, for. There's one element when I was talking about the ratios where they're flipping in between both of them, and there's a point where he ends up in the box and Isabel ends up in that full ratio, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, you're cooking!" And and they're yeah. match cutting between the two of them where you realize, "Oh, he has fully become that character." And I mm-hmm. think that's beautiful because I, I understand the people who are coming out of it, and maybe they they miss the transness. I think the moment they post about it, they won't miss it. But I yeah. don't think. When people come out of movies outside of this that has obviously a message to it, yeah. that yelling at someone for not getting the premise of a movie is the way to go. I agree. But now yeah. we've got a hit movie that yeah. isn't like The Matrix, where everyone went into that as this massive blockbuster and people took so much out of it. And years later, we look back and we go, what the pill's red, right? Yeah. It, there, there's so much allegory right there. Yeah. We obviously know what happened with the directors and their transitioning mm-hmm. and what they've done with the new installment as well. Yeah. But I... I, I I think it's bad to also dismiss the movie for people relating to it in a different way. I, I think agree with I'm, that too. Right? I there think are so the many strength, straight movies. Yeah, exactly. That queer people can latch onto and take oh. whether it was intentional by the creators or yeah. unintentionally and you find something in. Yeah. With this, I think its strength is that it works so heavily on both ends. Like strong, it would be, in my opinion, strongest trans. Then you go down like queer identity because Maddie is gay. 
Um, and just, but it really will relate to anybody who is, and like, maybe I get that some people are like, oh, your struggle of going to the wrong college and now you're 20 years later and you don't feel like you did what you were supposed to do is not the same as like me but concealing, but it's, yeah. it's, but you, can't you should, you people's should, but emotions. you should want people to be able to relate yeah. to this movie and then gain empathy and right. uh, compassion, more compassion, right. fuck empathy, compassion. There you go. For other people. No, but like when, when Ebert, when Ebert talks about movies as the empathy machine, it's because mm -hmm. of stuff like this, right? And while this is explicitly a story about trans identity mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. about the experience of being trans, it's through the relatability of it. The, the fact that anybody who's ever felt uncomfortable in their skin yeah. can can see themselves in this character yeah. then yeah. It extends to perhaps seeing yourself in the trans struggle and and you know being more open to it potentially because you you, you it. thought it was something completely <laughs> alien to you and turns out it's not. It's and, not. And, I you think can relate that to is, it. yeah, and I think that's really the strength of this movie. I, I've seen, I agree. you know, I, I've seen some people who have criticized the movie for maybe being like kind of only about the trans experience, but I think you it, it, you can dig oh. so much more into it, it's whether it is his childhood. That yeah, it's that that uh, ask that relationship to looking back and whether or not it is helpful or ultimately distracting you from where you're yes. supposed to go. Yeah, when when. When Jane introduced the movie at South by, they didn't say, "If you're not trans, sorry, <laughs> get, you get it." Here. Jane right, right. said, "This might hit unless you had a really good childhood. So if you did, <laughs> apologize." So something like said that. It themselves. You know, right? it, exactly. Like obviously, it means it is so it's so pivotal and important as what it is for the trans experience and then like just like the queer experience in, in general yeah. but the fact that it is just a thing that like so many people are going to be able to find pieces in if you had an abusive childhood and home life I've and, and shows too, yeah. are the media was how you escape from it because you kind of saw that a lot with Maddie. Like, not only was she gay, but her stepdad was like abusive and that was like a whole dynamic. I, this is the thing and becoming so obsessed with it and wanting that to be your reality so bad that it becomes more real than the reality you're forced to live in. Um, and I think that's, that's beautiful. And even though it is such a brutal movie, it is ultimately at the end, like really kind of hopeful. It's really just yeah. kind of like, it's not too late. You mm -hmm. know, it, there's always time. The, that's a message yeah. written in the chalk, right? Exactly. Literally. Yeah, Ooh. there's always in time. In the trailer? Oh. Nah, that is just breaking through. Jane's not even making a movie at that point. Jane's sending a message. Yeah. yeah. And I think in that the whole point, if yeah. you make a successful movie, it shouldn't be to gatekeep it because like you said, Amanda, it's now a pivotal piece of media. Mm -hmm. You cannot treat it the way the characters are treating it in the film as well because yeah. to make the best trans story is to make a human story. That's exactly it. And like Zach said, if you can connect to it in whatever way you do, you shouldn't dismiss it. You cannot deny what the story's premise is. But it shows you that you can connect to the experience that you thought was foreign to you. Yeah. And that's powerful. That's powerful. And that's, that's needed. Absolutely. It's necessary. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just also a good movie. Like, I know sometimes people are like, but it had a really it's important message. Sick, you can't hate it. It had a good message. It's like, no, it's also just like yeah. a powerhouse of a movie that is going to stick with you. It is weird. It's not trying to hold your hands. I can understand wanting more from it. But then even watching it again, some of the things I want more from, it's like, I think half the point is kind of how empty Owen right. is. And right. that, so it's like, he can only give so much to us. Because so they can only give so much to themselves. Yeah, I want to speak to that because that is something that I left my first screening feeling a little mm -hmm. bit of. That, like, I, I maybe had some expectations for the world feeling a little fuller, the, the, the whole... Uh, relationship between them and the pink uh, opaque being a, a little bit uh, broader in, mm -hmm. in some senses because when you first watch a movie you're sort of like trying to figure out which way it's going and yeah. I maybe like anticipated a little bit in the wrong direction but like in getting to revisit it in in recentering myself in the place that I think Jane wants me to be watching this movie. Like I, I focused so much more on the characters and their experience. And, and, and as you're saying, like that hollowness is the, the hollowness that uh, yeah. Owen is feeling that justice yeah. Smith's character is, is going through. And by the end, you're just really left devastated. Cause I think the thing that the film really excels at is instilling this tone. Um, we, we got a comment from one of our members, Trevor, 
talking about how it's not a traditional horror. I don't know if you would even go so far to call it horror, although it's not not horror it's either. Horrific. It's somewhere between <laughs> horror and coming of age and straight drama and maybe even a little bit of sci-fi like thrown like in there. It's like a supernatural yeah. horror. I keep bringing up Lynch, and would you consider some Lynch movies horror? Right, like they, right? those are other like movies right, that yeah. they skirt up on the edge of it, but they're not full blown horror. The the horror uh, here is really the yeah. the horror of a life lived unfulfilled. Yeah. Yes, yeah. If, if I'm running Fangoria, and I am 100 percent including this yeah. in the <laughs> not just unfulfilled, just inauthentic, just yeah, not living, yeah. just not living, <laughs> not living. <laughs> that's a that's a fun distinction. I think it does go in Fangoria, but it shouldn't go on Shutter, right? Yes, like, it's not that's that fair. style of horror. <laughs> that's fair. I can yeah, I feel that. Um, but a lot of those sort of like aesthetically horror moments, I think that really climaxes at this moment that we were talking about in Owen's revelation and, and some of the flashes that we get here. I think the image that's really stuck with me is, is those couple of shots we get with Owen's head in the TV and the sparks flying, the that blue TV glow and the yeah, sounds of like the static home, like, and screaming. Uh... Uh, it, it just gives me goosebumps even uh, thinking about it. That the the hot shower after that, it, it's yeah. obs- it's so viscerally disturbing. Burning TV, um, the burning TV. The, the the moon guy, uh, Mr. Melancholy. The ice cream truck. That yeah. is a, an, an insane <laughs> shot. They need to release more images of that in high quality. They do. But just also the. Um, they're selling stickers with the merch that they're selling. You can't oh, buy the yeah. stickers on that one. Or they're tattoos. Sorry. Yeah, temporary tattoos. I love that. The shot of it glowing. Uh, I'm actually really bummed. I had already ordered dripping the record. Dripping with style. I've sp- dripping with dripping style. style. I've just given them too much money lately, and the import taxes. <laughs> I just can't. I can't Ooh, do more. Wait, you, oh, did you order? Something? I ordered the record when the record dropped, and then I wanted to get the hat, but like it's it's so expensive. That's okay, it they said, I'll bring it to yeah, they, Oh, that's fair. <laughs> they said yeah, they were going to order it. A hat's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Ugh. Yeah, um, our final moments of the movie are with Owen, and at this point it almost feared, feels weird to use the he-him pronouns. Mm. I'll go with it anyway, because uh, with him denying his destiny and returning to a sad life, he gets married, starts a family, buys a bigger TV, and starts working for Connor O'Malley, of all people. Yeah. Um, then in a final scene at a kid's entertainment zone, Owen screams out of terror as the world pauses. Uh, All film, Owens talked about being too afraid to look inside. Uh, But in the bathroom, they take a box cutter and slice open their chest to reveal their insides glowing like the TV. For a moment, the music music crescendos. Owen gets to smile. And then they're returned back to their sad life. And we're left with the regret of the choices that Owen never made. It's got to be one of the most haunting film endings I've ever seen. Yeah, he's just yelling, I'm dying, like just yelling and then just apologizing, apologizing mm-hmm. for feeling, apologizing for daring to to reveal a piece of who they really wanted to be, uh, who they should have been and now feel like they can't be. Uh, that This was one of the ones like we always talk about how Uh, We like seeing things with audiences at festivals because you usually get the better, more authentic reaction. And I'm going to say that this is the one time that I disagree with that. We saw with press the first time at Sundance and the South by audience is definitely primed for a certain type of spectacle and reaction in movies. Uh, The that that last scene. It was a 50-50 split between people who were, like, crying and people who were awkwardly laughing, thinking that him screaming was supposed to be funny. And then the mm-hmm. movie cuts, and yes. then they're kind of like, oh, fuck, we're, that, was, that, that wasn't yeah. funny. I can't even, it's also like, telling fully them. blame people for, for laughing at the, that moment because it's so, yeah. like, awkward and, and uncomfortable. Some people have that kind of nervous reaction to It wasn't that kind of laugh. I would have allowed that kind of laugh. Yeah. It was some people thought it was supposed to be, like, an actual, like, yeah. funny moment yeah. at the where same it was time, going a little goofy but. in the movie he's crying out they're crying out they're... Owen's crying out mm-hmm. and at that point they all ignore him so yeah. what, how different is it from ignoring to just laughing at him you're dismissing exactly. what Owen's and going that's, through yeah and that's what it felt like and I kind of hope that some of those people do end up revisiting it and kind of realizing oh okay this is what it was going for um, I don't think yeah it wasn't bad it was just kind of like interesting you could tell mm-hmm. the people kind of like what Jane said you know um, apologies if you had a bad childhood but this is for you um, and if you you know congratulations if you had a good one yeah um, they were the ones laughing yeah exactly you know 
Um, or just like that, the, if there's nothing in this that you can relate to, like congratulations, yeah. you had. I think that's what it was. If there's nothing in this movie you can relate to, congratulations, Congrats. you had a good childhood. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I had a bad one, but like, <laughs> you know, you can relate you, at least. You go through some stuff, you know. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, it, it's some of the most effective filmmaking I've seen at just expressing that whole idea of like the choices you didn't make, right? Because yeah. so much about so much about film is seeing characters make choices, and and this is an entire story constructed around the idea of being too afraid to make that choice, being too afraid to to live your destiny, to live the life you were supposed to live. Um, you know, in some ways, it reminds me of like one of my favorite recent movies, The Disciple, which is mm. sort of like the the mm -hmm. unlived up to promise of that guy's uh, hope music dreams. Like there's just this this like emptiness that you're forced yeah. to to deal with. And it's communicated so clearly. Um, yeah. it, it's so good. Um, Art also brought this up briefly, but I'd I'd love to dive into it more uh, more deeply. Is that uh, we get the sort of reveal near the end here that the pink opaque is not the like really cool kind of adult show that yeah. we saw earlier, but in fact like a very cheesy made for kids piece of programming, which yeah. I feel like is probably an experience all of us can relate to now that like the shows we were growing up on are readily available to stream on Disney plus and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I loved uh, a bunch of Disney original programming and it, <laughs> watching more than two minutes of it now feels too Second hand Power Rangers is hard. Power yeah. Rangers is oddly hard. Digimon still holds up. <laughs> Pokemon's a little hard too. Any of the ones where it's like every single episode has this exact thing happening every time. So every episode of Power Rangers, you kill the little one mm -hmm. and then the little one yeah. turns big and then they have yeah. to beat the big one every single time. Mighty That's Morphin, you got corny. the yeah. Koombas in the back. Exactly. Zach told me to rewatch If, then I'm gonna feel it already in 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I feel yeah. like it's that idea. You watch the stuff that you grew up on, and I had said like you go to Rotten Tomatoes and you go, wait, everybody hated this? No, this yeah. was mm -hmm. no, this was important. Sometimes they're wrong. Who do we gotta fight? Sometimes they and are sometimes wrong, they're though. Wrong. Yeah. Sometimes they're wrong. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's that attachment it speaks, you get to the media. It's it speaks attachment. to that idea. Yeah, like it can be important and feel um, incredible to you in that moment, even if it isn't. Yeah. And uh, in a weird way, it almost is a defense of all those shows that we loved as kids, right? Yeah. Because like, even if it isn't actually good, it felt good, and it, that's yeah, that's I think all what it matters. To be at the time. It's yeah. the right. feeling of it. Yeah, yeah but at the, the same time, like you have that rose tinted nostalgia where you're yeah. not necessarily seeing things for what they actually yeah. were. Not everything can Ooh. be Disney's recess. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's just what I love is that the movie is not like positive or negative on the idea of looking back. It sees the value in it, but it also sees the harm in it. Um, yes. I feel like, and it's something that it, it, I feel like it's in, it's encouraging you to like appreciate it and remember it, but not live uh -huh. in the past. Right, yeah. not to not to trigger word here, pardon my French, but the Last Jedi. You know, that's a movie where a lot of people, because they were so attached to something, you have a very clear stance because right. of the people who have yeah. the nostalgia, and you go, "That's not right." Believe it or not, it's a human story, and you have the exact same thing here. You can be yeah. attached to something so much that while it opens up things for you, you, you can't. It, it can't be your full lifeline sometimes, and it's coming to uh, with your own realization that that that's something you need to do. One of my favorite parts is at the end, Zach was talking about uh, when no one gets a TV. And it's yeah. an LG for Jeez, Life is Good. Dude. Nah. It's I, so like, much. I don't know how everything. they cleared that. Incredible. And and the post, so like the funny. posters in the hallway of the school. Mm -hmm. You know, pain yeah. is, you know. Pain is, yeah. yeah All they have in there. I also love the idea of the TV there as just this representation of the passage of time like Owen's telling That's us him. oh I have a family now but we never see his family but we, we see their TV and TV you know, first, yeah. especially for us as people who really like I think I, I feel like I can speak uh, comfortably in saying like we helped we came to learn a bit about ourselves through our relationship to media and and by consuming all these movies and TV that then you know help feed our personality like Why the idea of the TV right mm -hmm. yeah the idea of the TV as the thing that ultimately represents your new phase in life I think is a really smart one like I, yeah. I can clock sections of my life by how I consumed media that's true that's incredible yeah. dude I do that with yeah. phones 
I think of every accomplishment or whatever that I've gotten and what phone I had, what memories are saved on those phones. And that's that mm -hmm. little tiny black screen that you've got with you. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, just us. That's the reason we know each other. We get together yeah. several times a year just to sit in front of a massive black screen as well. Watch it's that TV it. glow. It's, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, so much to talk about with this movie. Anything that we have yet not mentioned that either of you want to address? Mm. The Fruitopia. Uh, I thought it was very <laughs> profound. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, that uh, Emma Portnoy is like Mr. Melancholy. No, the twins? Maybe both. Maybe all. And like Mr. Melancholy. Uh, Emma Portnoy is um, uh, Elliot Page. Elliot Page is X. Oh, um, okay. That's why all the interpretive dances and stuff, because that's yeah, Emma. Emma's a dancer. Yeah. Uh, a lot of like weird, like Smashing Pumpkins type references, especially with like the melancholy stuff. And yeah, just uh, yeah, it was very, very cool. Very. It's it, like the main thing is that like the takeaway from the movie is that it is simultaneously such a gut wrenching, brutal watch that like it's like a gut punch. Like there's that scene where he says it felt like his insides are scooped out. Mm -hmm. that like mm -hmm. resonates so hard and that's kind of what the movie feels like by the end in a way but at the same time like the message is there's still time like this totally. i'm yeah. showing you the horror of what it can be it doesn't have to be that yeah, yeah. um so, the scariest yeah. part is to keep living without saying it as scared exactly. as you are to reveal it it's worse it's to worse. keep it inside exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. My my estimation for this movie has definitely grown since we did our first review out of Sundance. Like as as we keep talking about it, it is the kind of movie that really just gets under your skin. You can't help but keep thinking about it and keep revisiting things. I do still have some of the same criticisms of it. And Art and I were talking about this off camera a little bit in that like in places it be, feels both over and un underwritten. Like mm -hmm. they really go in on the monologues and kind of explaining the metaphor to a T and, and probably feels a little bit over long. And then in other places, it feels like they are underwriting the characters in a way that that kind of works. But um, I don't know. It it, it 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 can feel a little uneven in points. But it's mm. nothing that keeps me from thinking that this is like not only a remarkable movie, but one of the defining movies of this year. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll offer a little counter to that, and I, I still think the takeaway can be the same because of like how you end up feeling about it at the end is really all that matters. But mm -hmm. Maddie having more defined dialogue in areas makes sense because Maddie made the more defined stance on her life, yeah. her life, and who mm -hmm. she is, uh, yeah. whereas uh, Owen doesn't have the capacity to do that. So yeah. the profound statements Owen makes are almost all before he even considers that a possibility mm -hmm. uh, when they are just kind of speaking authentically, like that bleacher scene when it's just like, he's just saying things so casually, like yeah. it's yeah. whatever. And then it's as they're getting more involved in, in like the pink opaque and like the time they actually get to spend with Maddie after the fact that like things become, and then that's when it, sh it shuts the door down on the honesty because starting to see that and what the implication is there is like too much and gets shut mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Owen's living in a more unexamined life. Yeah. 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 I had that with the parents too, but then I realized like, Many times the most timeless movies don't give you too much details. It allows you to be able to fill them in. Yeah. And that's what's yeah. going to gravitate probably. Right, because there you know, is this whole relationship with the yeah. parents in that they kind of infantilize him. Uh, Owen is like riding home with his head in his mother's Always. lap at yeah. one point. Mm -hmm. in a, like a couple and, times, I think. Like, And it not, yeah. not just because they cast Justice Smith, but like even the age that the character is supposed to be, it feels like Owen's way too old to be yeah, being absolutely. treated like that. They even mentioned that none of the other kids have bedtimes, but Owen still has a bedtime. Yeah. 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 There's lots, lot. of, lots of interesting things to pull out of this there movie. There really is, yeah. Yeah. It's a remarkable move, movie. I'm glad that it seems to be resonating with a lot of people. I know a lot of the inner cuties are really liking it. I'm, yeah. ha I'm yeah. looking forward to hearing thoughts from a bunch of the inner cuties. So uh, leave your thoughts in know. comments or mm -hmm. shoot us an email, intercutpod at gmail.com. Reach out to us across socials at intercutpod. Um, but that's about it for this edition of the podcast that's amanda the jedi over there's art he does at lme movies i'm zach shevich z-s-h-e-v as in tv i-c-h and i do multiplex show as well um we do intercut weekend must watch on mondays make sure you stream ja that subscribe to the audio whatever podcatcher you use subscribe to the video youtube.com slash intercut at intercut pod uh and yeah 
do all the things. Give us a five star on iTunes. Like, comment, do the things. Um, support us on social media to get updates throughout the week. But that's about it for this edition of the podcast. And until next time, be careful with box cutters.